I have had the good fortune of testing a number of Bluetti's power stations, and I consider them some of the finest, if not the finest, power stations available on the market today. Well, now I have a new unit from Bluetti I want to share with you, the smallest and lightest in their lineup. This is the AC2A. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. Just before we get started, I want to thank Bluetti for sending out the AC2A so that I could share it with you. You know, when Bluetti offered to send this unit out to me, it came at a really good time because I had been considering the versatility, the pros and cons of small power units versus larger power units. And one of the things that I had come up with is that while larger power units have a lot of power and versatility for home use, they're not so great for traveling with. They're quite big, quite bulky, and honestly, much more than you usually need in a power station when you're traveling. So when this one was offered to me, I took them up on it right away because I could see some real benefits for having a small unit like this one. And we're gonna go into that shortly. So what I'd like to do is start off by going down to the tabletop where we'll go over both the physical and performance specifications for this unit, its modes of operation, and then I'll share my thoughts in you Using it with you. Just before we take a closer look at the unit itself, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. Let's put the unit aside. So right off of the top is the AC charging cable. And you will note this does not have the typical power pack or brick on the cable. It's actually built right into the unit. I think that's very impressive considering the small size and light weight of this unit. And I think it's quite a nice feature as well. Also included is this solar charging cable. So on one end, it has the MC4 connectors connecting to your solar panel and on the other end it has the XT60 connector which would plug into the power station itself and finally it does come with a manual which not only contains all the operating instructions but the warranty information as well. Let's bring the unit back into the picture. We're going to go briefly over its key features before we get into its specifications. So right off the top as I mentioned when I opened up this is the smallest and lightest power station in Bluetti's lineup to date. But that does not mean it's not capable of some larger performance or performance often given to larger units. So like this, 300 watts of power delivery. That's pretty impressive for such a small unit. And it can also go up to a 600 watt surge if necessary. The battery is a little bit smaller, of course, at 204.8 watt hours, and it is the lithium iron phosphate batteries that we come to enjoy. It has three power delivery modes. The eco mode is its default, and I will be explaining each of these a little later. It also has a standard mode and a power lifting mode. It also has three charging speeds. There is a standard charging speed. There is a turbo charging speed which will bring the unit up to full power much quicker. Of course, it's not something recommended for constant use because it can shorten the life of the batteries. It also has a much slower charging speed known as their silent mode, which if you're not in a rush, why not use the silent mode? It's quiet and it will extend the life of the batteries over time. It has a true UPS S function on interrupted power supply, which is nice. And it does come with Bluetti's Bluetooth app, which allows you to not only access in real time the status of your battery, but change some of the modes as we just talked about without having to press a number of buttons on the unit itself. All right, let's get into the physical specifications for this unit. So this is one of the key things, and I, it just bears repeating, is its lightweight. 7.9 pounds or 3.6 kilograms without question. A nice light unit given its power capability. In this dimension, it is 9.8 inches, 250 millimeters. In this dimension, front to back, it's 5.9 inches, 150 millimeters. And top to bottom, 7.1 inches, 180 millimeters. And as I mentioned a minute ago, it is equipped with the lithium iron phosphate battery which have a approximately 10 year lifespan depending upon your usage of course or 4,000 full life cycles charged to recharge at which point it drops to 80% of its original power capacity meaning it's still useful of course. We'll begin the performance specifications for the AC 2A by talking about its input capability. So this unit can receive up to 270 watts max combined AC and DC 
input. So the AC input is, of course, 120 volt, 4.8 max, and there's where the cable would attach on the side. And the DC input is through the XT60 connection up here, where it will take between 12 and 28 volts, up to 200 watts at 8.2 amps. So a good 200 watt solar panel will really help to charge this unit up in a hurry. Now, as far as output goes, it, as previously mentioned, the battery is 204.8 watt hours, and it will deliver up to 300 watts with a 600 watt surge. So to start, it has the two AC ports that you can see on the front, and those two AC ports will deliver 120 volt, 2.5 amp, 60 hertz, pure sine wave energy. There is one auto port here and the auto port will deliver 12 volt DC up to 10 amps. There is two USB type A output ports here, each delivering 5 volt 2.4 amps. And there is also one USB-C port here delivering up to 100 watts at either 5, 9, 12 uh, volts, uh, 3 amps, or up to even 20 volts at 5 amps. Just before we go through the operation of the AC two-way, I thought I'd just give you a bit of a 360 degree view of it so you can get a look at some of its features. So in addition to the buttons and uh, output ports and input ports, ports on the front of the unit. On the side you'll see, well of course I mentioned this already, this is where the AC cable will plug in, but there is also a grounding wire should you need, feel the need to ground the unit. There is the fan vent on that side. The only other one is another fan vent on this side. And I like the handle. Look at the handle. It's integrated into the body design so it doesn't protrude. It's not going to get caught up on anything and it's quite easy to grasp and carry the unit. All right, let's get into the operation. So right off of the top, there are three buttons right here. The center button is the overall powering on of the unit. And I want to draw your attention to the display. I'm hoping this is picking up. And this is one of the things Bluetti does so, so very, very well, is they make their displays comprehensive and easy to understand and very easy to see, even in bright sunlight. So it will power down in a minute, so I may have to hit the button again. But let's draw your attention right to the center. This is where you're getting the uh, indication of what your battery capacity is. And right now you'll see there's a numeric number number 100%. So my battery is fully charged at this time. Around the outside of that is a segmented blue half circle or three quarter circle. And each of the segments also indicating, like an icon, indicating the amount of power left in the unit. What is a little bit more challenging to see right at the bottom down here is a small numeric value showing you how long you have left running time on this unit. Now, of course, that's going to be dependent on whatever it is that you have plugged into it that you're you're operating or recharging. There it goes. I do have to bring it back up. So right now it's showing 99.9 .9 hours, but there's no loads on the unit. So once I plug something into this and it starts drawing power, then that number will change, indicating how long the battery will operate that unit for. And the more units or, or things you plug into this, of course, it's going to change to reflect it. And this is a good time to point out as well that you this unit does support pass-through charging, meaning that you can charge or operate units off of the battery and simultaneously recharge the unit. So that's great. So that you have the two sources. Now, you, if you're using this unit, likely it's not because you have AC available to you, so that cable wouldn't be coming to use, but maybe because you do have solar. So you can solar charge your unit while operating or charging other devices off of it. Now, if you want to turn on the AC, there is a dedicated AC button right here. So let's just press that. And the AC is on, indicated right down at the bottom, there's a little AC. And now you have access to your two AC ports on this side. And on the other side, of course, is the DC button. So you press that one until the light turns on. And now I have show indicated DC at the bottom. And of course, all three buttons are illuminated with green to help you see that they are in fact functioning. The other things about this is the input and the output wattage for this unit. Trying to make sure it's anchored to the camera so that the light isn't causing too much of a reflection. So I can, the unit will show you how much power is going in 
and simultaneously how much power is going out. So all the features you want in a display, nicely laid out, easy to see. Again, this is one of the things I think Bluetti does better than anybody else. Okay, at this point, what I want to do is talk about the three charging modes I mentioned in the opening of the video, as well as the three operating modes. So let's start with the charging modes. Now, to change charging modes, you can do it one of two ways. You can either use the Bluetooth app, which is the easiest, obviously, but you don't always have your phone with you, maybe, and so you can't access the Bluetooth app. So there is a set of instructions that show you how to change the mode with the buttons on here and basically you're pressing the AC and the DC buttons at the same times to make the changes now I won't go through that now but all that information is in the manual which of course will be with the unit when you receive it and I'll have it in the video description below but I do want to talk about the charging mode so as I mentioned earlier there is a standard mode and that's what the unit comes in with you receive it now with the standard mode you can recharge this unit in as little as two hours that in itself is is very impressive and that's the one you probably want to use most often because it had or often because it has minimal impact on the lifespan of the batteries however if you do have a need to get this unit up to full power quickly you can institute the turbo mode and the turbo mode will bring the battery from zero up to 80 percent in as little as 45 minutes very impressive of course but as i mentioned doing that on a regular basis is going to shorten the lifespan of your batteries. Now, if you really want to extend the lifespan of your batteries and you're not in a rush to get the unit charged, maybe you're just going to plug it in and let it charge overnight, you can set it for silent mode. Silent mode is exactly that silent. You're not going to hear the fans turn on. There's not going to be any sound coming from the unit. And it does take longer to charge the unit, but again, it does give you the best lifespan for your batteries. It takes about four hours to charge the unit in silent mode. Now, now, as I mentioned, also, there are three operating modes. Now, the unit comes with eco mode set by default, but you can, again, you can charge or change that both for the AC and the DC, which is kind of interesting. So if you just want the eco mode operating for AC or DC or both, you can set those modes as well. I think that's the versatility there is quite nice. Now, what's the deal with eco mode? Well, eco mode means primarily that the unit will power down when the draw of power is at its lowest. So sometimes, uh, not necessarily my cell phone, but I have experiences with some of my flashlights and other small items, things like a, a watch or the earbuds, if you have those, they will sometimes draw so little power that a unit will, and this unit as well, will say, well, they're finished, let's shut the unit down and save energy, when in fact they're not fully charged. So eco mode is not always the best choice. It is for most things, like charging your cell phone, charging your tablets, that type of thing. You can charge them up in eco mode, knowing that there is a continuous draw high enough that, well, there's We'll just press that center button again to bring the display back up. But it'll draw enough power that the unit will recognize that and continue to provide the energy. But for small draw units, it can actually shut them down. So if you are charging things like a, an Apple Watch or a set of earbuds, then you may want to change it from eco mode to a standard mode. And you can do that. And the unit will stay on regardless of the draw. Uh, drawbacks? Well, the only drawback is, of course, if there's no power being delivered to something that you're charging, then you're wasting a little bit of power inside of the battery. So you do have some uh, often referred to as parasitic loss. There's just power being delivered to nothing, basically, and it will shorten not the lifespan of the batteries, but the capacity of the batteries in the short term. So uh, it's just one of those things you decide which one it is. I personally find it a little bit frustrating when I'm trying to charge something small and the battery shuts down. So just be aware of that it does have, give you the option and it is a nice option to have. However, the unit also has a power lifting mode. Now this is not something that I would recommend using on a regular basis, but the power lifting mode will allow you to change the output of the battery to up to 700 watts for a short period of time. Now there is some qualifications around that. Number one is that it has to be a resistive load. And a resistive load is something that's continuous 
over the duration of its use. So think coffee maker, small coffee maker, maybe a toaster. You understand what I'm saying. Usually a heating element is considered a resistive load. Anything with a motor is not a resistive load. It goes up and down and it's not suitable for use with the power lifting mode. And of course, if you draw out that extra energy out of this, it's going to shorten the amount of power you have left in your battery very quickly. And it accomplishes that by changing the voltage. So it's not a pro appropriate for every device and that's primarily why you can get away with the resistive loads. You really can't change the voltage for a motor but you can to a certain degree with resistive loads like heating elements. All right I wanted to share my experiences with the AC2A and why it is I enjoy using it so much. So to begin I have a number of larger batteries in my collection, most some of which are from Bluetti and other manufacturers. And while I appreciate their capability, um, they're just a bit too big for taking anywhere, especially if you don't have a need for that much power. And that's where a small unit like the AC2A comes in. If you're not running large items, you don't need extended power, but you want to have something that you can take with you that is compact and light wait hard to beat that right there especially where it delivers 300 watts of energy and surges up to 600 watts that's amazing for such a small unit now you have to be realistic it only has 204.8 watt hours of capacity which means whatever it is that you're plugging into it is not going to run for a long period of time especially on ac yeah you can recharge your tablets and your phones and other batteries for you know a number of times but you're not going to be running your refrigerator for all that long which means of course that you're going to need some way of keeping the battery recharged and that's where it's important to select a good solar panel to go with it or have access to AC while you're road camping that you can recharge your battery so that's something to take into consideration lots of capability for a small unit but still does have some limitations overall this is the one that I'm likely to take with me when I go car camping just because of its small size. There's so many things I'm putting in the back of my car that a large unit that I don't need is not one of them. All right, and finally, there's just a few things that I want to bring to your attention. They're not so much cons for this unit, but there's things I think it's worth being aware of. First off, what's missing on this unit? Let's see if you can decide or if you can determine what that is. There's no LED light. Now, a lot of people, me included, will say, I don't see the need for an LED light on a power station. I agree with you. Um, but however, some people have told me in the past that they like to have that lamp built into this. Maybe they put it on their picnic table to area light while they're doing meal prep in the evenings. Or maybe they like to have the light on it so they can see what they're doing while they're setting this up in conjunction with something they either want to operate or charge. Oh, wait, I can see that. However, I don't think there's too many camping trips I haven't gone, that I've gone on that I didn't also take a flashlight or a headlamp with me. So again, I don't see the need for one. So if you really feel the need for one, you're not going to get it on this unit. So one other thing it doesn't have, and that seems to be common on a lot of units, but not on this one. There is no wireless charging pad on top. So if you have a phone or something else that will uh, charge wirelessly, then this is not the unit for you. Uh, the only other thing, well, okay, I wouldn't say this is a con. It's again, just something that I took note of. And the fact is, when I look looked at this unit, it reminded me some of the other units from Blue Eddy recently in that the ports are all covered with rubber. So yes, dust proof without question, but it would also give you the impression that it has some degree of water resistance. So I asked Blue Eddy about that. This unit does not have an IP rating. So uh, don't count on this as be IP68 or anything even approaching that. But I think just having those ports there it does mean you're at least keeping the dust out, even if you're not keeping the water out. I suspect like some of its other units of a similar design, it may be somewhat water resistant. It's just nothing that uh, Blue Eddy is going to stand behind. So the best advice is don't let it get wet, of course. Okay, and the only other thing uh, that I experienced and that was seemed to be intermittent and only when I first got the unit, I did find that the Blue Eddy app for this, the Bluetooth app for this unit was a little bit buggy. Now, what I mean by buggy is when it worked, it worked the way it was intended to but it kept disconnecting from the unit and I couldn't figure out why. Now, maybe the app is updated and now it's working better. Um, 
it, it's not doing that for me now. So maybe because it was just an early uh, development of the app in conjunction with this unit that it wasn't working. So just something to watch for when you get this unit is to ensure that your Blue Weddy app stays connected with you uh, on, on the unit while you're using it. Okay, that's everything I have to say about this unit. I think you've probably gotten the impression that I really like it. I really do like this. I've, I've liked all of Blue Weddy's products. There's none that I would say I don't like, but I especially like this unit for its small size and still has the, a good amount of capability with it. I will be putting all the information I have, including all the specifications and the information where you can take another look at this in the video description below. If you have any comments or questions, please put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that pathless travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.